Alright, uh, today we're here with Ngayo Bilo. Ngayo Bilo! How you doing today, man? I don't feel like you're pretty attacked right now. I'm fine. Happy to be back in Texas? Always happy to be back in Texas, and I never thought that I would say that. This guy, amazing, great, hilarious, San Francisco native, right? Yeah, one of the few, one of the real ones. And he's, uh, and he's uh, a finalist in San Francisco comedy competition, a legend, Ngayo Bilo! More noise, damn it. Let's hear it for Jim. Three hours. Give yourselves a round of applause. Three fucking hours. That means if you took a five hour energy drink, you might want to think about taking another one. Smoking tobacco. I may have smoked a joint in the back. Uh, I'm not, yeah, it was me. Look at me again. Of course it was me. Fucking duh. I love weed. It makes me a better parent. Right? Right. My kids know I smoke weed. They know that thanks to weed, dad will take them to any animated feature ever. <laughs> what? The panda knows kung fu? Hell yeah, get in the car. <laughs> Is it 3D? Dad loves 3D. <laughs> you guys go get the tickets. <laughs> go, don't look at me, look for cars. <laughs> right? Weed and movies go together like weed and movies, you understand? <laughs> but really, are we even in Texas? We're in Austin. Yeah, which is kind of... It's different. It's, it's weird how the like, cultural of the state is. is different than the rest of it. But I'm gonna say I think that San Antonio has better weed. Although, although uh, I have managed to find some good weed my past two days here yeah. in Austin, some Golden Goat. Nice. Uh, it was delicious, and I found a Diesel and a White Fire. It was pretty good too. Nice. So it's a little variety. Nice. After the harvest season, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it was grown. I, I tried a Granddaddy that was grown here yeah. in Texas, but uh, other than that, it's all imports. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Weed is good for you. Studies have shown that marijuana actually helps to prevent the symptoms and the onset of Alzheimer's disease. It's true. How it works is you get so used to forgetting shit, you develop a system. <laughs> right? Then when the Alzheimer's kicks in, you don't even notice. You just think you're high. Which is not a bad way to live, really, because I do. I smoke weed everywhere. I don't give a shit. Um, especially on the golf course. Yes, I golf. Look at me again. Black people should golf every day. Anytime you can hit white balls with a stick. <laughs> for real. Did I mention I get pulled over for bullshit? Did I mention that? Straight to the golf course. <laughs> Four! Twenty! Uh, because you know, nobody says shit. No one is ever surprised when the large African-American dreadlocked fellow whips out some marijuana. No one's ever shocked. Oh, you'd ever see that? No, fuck, no, no, I, this is California. People know I smoke weed, right? You got a blunt and a, or fuck, I fucked up the joke because I'm high as hell. <laughs> you, got a, you got a whiskey and a cigar, I'm gonna have a blunt and a Diet Coke. That's my point, right? <laughs> Nobody says shit on the golf course to me. I got, I got paired up with a random white dude, one time middle-aged white dude, third hole, I fired up a dude. I'm like, hey man, you wanna hit? He's like, no thank you, but do you have any crack? <laughs> No, and might I add that I'm offended by your assumption, sir. <laughs> Secondly, who the fuck smokes crack on the golf course? What the fuck? That's not helping your swing. <laughs> you need the right drug for the right activity is my point. <laughs> right, weed and golf makes sense, right? Crack and golf don't make sense. You don't take crank and go to this, the chess tournament. Right? You don't eat a bunch of mushrooms and try to run a marathon. <laughs> what do you mean I'm off course? This whole planet is off course. <laughs> I see through the whole thing. Why am I wearing a number? <laughs> right, you can't run a marathon on mushrooms. It'll take you three days. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing and crying the whole time, right? <laughs> crying because your feet hurt. Laughing because you're happy to have feed. <laughs> the beauty of mushrooms right there. Do you prefer like an indica or a sativa or? I like marijuana, yeah. uh, mostly. Yeah. Uh, if I have my druthers, I would like to smoke pot. Yeah. Um, I like hy hybrids a lot. Yeah. I like a Blue Dream or Blue City Diesel. Uh, uh, Three Kings is a good one. Gorilla Glue is this new thing on the West Coast right now that's pretty sweet. And I like, um, it, it give me a good hybrid almost any day. Nice. I guess me and Mr. Yin Yang is going to be balanced out. No, too much, too fast, too slow. Radical moder moderation, sir. Radical moderation. What do you like? Um, uh, yeah, I'm the same way. I like all weed. I all weed. Just any kind I'm here of for the marijuana. Yep. That's what I tell them.
People hear me talk about drugs. That was good. You do a lot of drugs. I don't do a lot of drugs. I do a few drugs a lot. <laughs> there's a difference, right? Mostly I love weed, and I'm up here to dispel some myths because there's some misconceptions. There's some misunderstandings. Pot smokers never do anything. You guys are lazy. You never do anything, and we never do anything, like become president or win 20 fucking gold medals in three different Olympics. Pot smokers are super lazy. Never, <laughs> never fucking do anything. My whole point is I like to smoke weed and then do something. Right? Smoke a joint and go to the comedy show, right? <laughs> Smoke a joint and write a song. Smoke a joint and get some booty. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh, come on, for real. The Smokey Pokey is my favorite game. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Do the Smokey Pokey and you smack that ass around. <laughs> boom, boom, put your fingers in. All right, look. Uh, <laughs> take your fingers out. Put your fingers in, then you make like a come here. Make a come here. Hello, yeah. Feel for the spongy part. It's different on everybody. So. Don't, are you uncomfortable? Don't be uncomfortable. This can only help you. This can only help you. You will thank me later. You'll be like, oh my God, that stoner's a fucking genius. Watch this. This is crazy. We need more towels. Get some towels. So uh, I read that you were part of the most chill slack mob. <laughs> I'm still part of the most chill slack mob, so uh, we are all in the slack mob. Nice. Uh, Tell me a little bit about that. that. <laughs> That's my own hip-hop band nice. from back in the 90s and early 2000s. We used to travel around and play the hip-hop music in a band and stuff. Nice. Sing songs of urban mind expansion and uplift and exhortation. And so how do you transition from that into comedy? Uh, well, I was a comic first, and I was like, I majored in music theater in okay. school, so it's always acting and singing and telling jokes. And, it's just, that's and juggling, it. apparently. And juggling. I still juggle. Okay. I may even juggle tonight. I, nice. told, uh, I told Michael the doorman that I would bring some juggling balls while he tried to get people inside, do some juggling. I'm like, come on in, see the show. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Only one thing better than smoking weed and doing it. And that's smoking weed and doing it in a hotel. Hotel sex. Who likes hotel sex? Yeah. Hotel sex is the shit. Oh my God, I go ham. I go crazy. You aren't my real neighbors. I don't give a fuck what you think. Dude, I try to break the headboard. I give no fucks. I don't care. Sure. Hey, look at me funny at the breakfast buffet all you want. I don't give a shit. I'm like, what's up? Yeah, walk a game, bitches. Hey. How's it going? Yes, yes, I am in 403. Yes, I am. Yes, and I'm sorry you had to have an uncomfortable conversation with your children. I apologize. I paid $200 for that room. Ooh, is that syrup? We're going to get a late checkout. You know what I'm talking about. Hotels. Oh, my God. I lose my mind. I'm freaky enough already. So, uh, I don't think they'll let me do the torches, but I didn't bring those anyway, so yeah. I'll just play with my balls on 6th Street. <laughs> it's always fun. Wouldn't be the first time. Oh, no. Wouldn't be the first time. I was just up here Sunday to interview a, a band, and there was this uh, cracked out naked lady uh, just nice. walking down the street. I'm sorry, a cracked out naked lady or a naked lady with her crack out? It's it was both. Both. She was on Just say no to all the crack. All of it. All the crack at that point. You guys freaky, nobody? Of course you are, this is San Francisco, town full of freaks. Don't front, I'm from here. You can't even make jokes about group sex. People take that shit seriously. <laughs> hey everybody, come back over, we're gonna have an orgy. Oh really, what time? <laughs> I should go home and trim it up. <laughs> I wanted to tape the office. 10 o'clock, huh? So uh, you write for Cannabis Planet, right? Uh, Cannabis Planet was a TV show. Cannabis Planet. I was the anchor man for that. Uh, currently, I'm the uh, marijuana advice columnist for the Sacramento News and Review, okay. and the Marijuana Culture Editor at MarijuanaPolitics.com. And I like to say marijuana a lot, apparently. <laughs> That's one of the challenges with being a marijuana writer, is finding different ways to say marijuana. Right? Yeah. Marijuana, cannabis, pot, grass, weed, dank. Uh, you, you can't just say marijuana, 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 yeah. marijuana. Yeah, definitely gets re repetitive. Repetitive. So you wrote- Weed, 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 weed. I'm sorry. You can I forgot what I was talking about. Weed? <laughs> I love it. You like my jacket? First of all, I tried a purple onion. Yeah. It's, like I'm the, it's like I'm the black Willy Wonka. 
the Hennessy tastes like Hennessy. She never saw the movie, he's explaining it. <laughs> Hennessy is a liquor commonly enjoyed by black people. <laughs> Get out, the fuck? Never, we, we don't listen to rap music. I'm on that XO and Remy, taking a break from Henny. All right, so Mac Dre, whatever, you guys <laughs> stare at me. When the moon hits your eye. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's a boy. <laughs> he's like, woo, fuck, I've been waiting for that song. Uh, the West Coast Cannabis Magazine. I was you? the, yes, I was the editor of the publisher of West Coast Cannabis Magazine for like three years, 2008 to 2011 or so. It was great. I like it. Yeah. It was awesome. You liked it? It's a good magazine. So what are, it. what are some of the stuff you write about? Just columns about marijuana? Or? Uh, mostly weed. Yeah, it's a lifestyle, right? Yeah. So we had all kinds of things, right? We'd have news, we'd have politics, we'd have activism, we'd have profiles on people who were prominent in the marijuana uh, community and industry and activism circles, advocacy groups, mm -hmm. uh, beautiful pictures. It's a magazine, so you get all the nice pictures that you can put on the wall in the bathroom or whatever, or, you know, in your bedroom or your marijuana room, so you can give your plants something to look at. Hey, you guys grow up to look like this. <laughs> can you look like this one? That would be great, you guys. It's a role model, right? Nice. Or it's like having a picture of Michael Jordan when you're in junior high. You got a picture of Michael Jordan on the wall. Teach, give your plants. So, this is a blueberry. You guys are blueberry. You should aspire, aspire, aspire to be greater. Aspire to be greater. <laughs> Go beyond blueberryness to true marijuana ness. All right. As soon as I remember the rest of my act, I'm gonna do two more jokes. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. That's the thing. California, you get so, we get so used to smoking weed. Please, can we please legalize weed so I can open a bud and breakfast? Yeah. All right. You could, would you come visit me at the Wake and Bacon? <laughs> Hell yeah, weed and coffee every morning. It's a poor man's eight ball. <laughs> that wasn't the joke I wanted to tell. <laughs> that one just occurred to me. <laughs> So, uh, I also uh, read that you're a polymath, or polymath? God, what does that even mean? It means that you're uh, uh, smart about a lot of different things. Oh, sure. But aren't we all? Really? Uh, Apparently I'm not smart enough to know what that word means. <laughs> it means I know more than one math. Yes, I can add and subtract it. So what are some of your I'm areas? polyarithmetic. <laughs> I know division and multiplication. I know my gazentus, right? I know my Four gazentus 16 four times. Four gazentus 25 times. You don't know your gazentus. You don't know your gazentus. Yeah. That's also what you say after someone sneezes. <laughs> so, what are some of your areas of expertise? <laughs> Is it just weed? Or weed, comic books, Star Trek a little bit. Although I wouldn't call myself an expert in the Star Trek. Well, maybe the old, the first generation Star Trek for sure, classic Star Trek. Do you speak Klingon? Not anymore. Okay. Uh, only when I'm mad, <laughs> but I'll cuss at you in Klingon. Throws them, throws them off the scent. We had a couple of Twitter questions. Uh, one of them uh, was, uh, have you ever not had dreadlocks? Well, I wasn't born with this haircut. Well, that's what I... <laughs> so, yes, I've often not had dreadlocks uh, until I was... In my mid-20s, I guess, I started these in 1993, February 93. Nice. So I've had them for a while. And uh, they also wanted to know what your stance on jetpacks were. All, always for jetpacks. Always for jetpacks? You're talking about actual futuristic jetpacks? Yes. Yeah. If I could have one superpower, it would be to teleport. So, of course, I would want a jetpack. How could you not want a jetpack? Dude, I'll be there in an hour. Up, up, and away. Of course, there'd be a lot of assholes who can't yeah. fly. Don't, hey, don't get drunk in jetpack. Would that be a, you know, that's all I'm saying. Parachute saves lives, kids. That's true. So, uh, how do you keep your joint lit, though, in your jetpack? Like, when you're driving in your car and you're smoking a joint, not that I would ever do that, especially in Texas. Uh, you can roll up your window and keep your joint lit. But yeah. if you have a jetpack, I guess you just use your vapor pen. Yeah. It's the future. It's the future. <laughs> you kids and your futuristic <laughs> oil sticks. When I was a young man, we had to smoke hash between two knives and a wine bottle. That's what we used. Right? We'd roll it into a coil and light it up and put it under a glass and smoke hash under glass. Sounds so fucking hard. <laughs> it's actually pretty easy to do. 
Yeah. But hash also wasn't like around everywhere all that. Hash was a treat. Yeah. Like, hash would still be a treat, you guys, with you, all your drugs. Yeah, I remember when hash was like, ooh. It should still be like that. That's how I'm like, I'm like ooh, hash, ooh. Yeah. Well, cream to mint. Nice. Nice. Um, so you've been an actor in, in a couple of things. I've been an actor in a few things. Uh, this beautiful play we call life. Yeah. We are all the players. Yeah. And I'm playing the just the play. Stage. I'm mixing Shakespeare and Bootsy Collins right now. It's kind of weird. But go ahead. The world is a stage. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let your life be your Sundance. Um, so uh, what were some of the movies that you worked on that you really, really enjoyed? I've been in like two movies, so all of them. All of them? All of them. Every single one that I was in. They're fun. They're fun, dude. Yeah. Uh, you get free food. It's like, yeah. like Google. Yeah, it's, uh, I always find it funny that uh, Hollywood expects you to be slim and trim and fit all the time, and yet whenever you're on the set, there's like M and M's and cinnamon rolls and Red Bulls, and, you know, all kind of crazy food. Well, that's I want donuts. That's how beginning actors eat. That's how Dan Aykroyd got fat. <laughs> oh. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Um, it's probably so Val Kilmer had big too. So what are some of your comedic accolades? Some of my like some awards that I've won. Yeah. Uh, I came in second place in San Francisco International Comedy Competition. Um, I won the Chico State Comedy Competition in 1991, nice. back in the day. Beat out a young Darren Carter, the party starter. Uh, the 1994 winner of the People's Choice Award at the International Juggling Association Festival. That's about uh, sure, I'd be the one armed kid for that. Uh, no, it's actually true. <laughs> He's a hell of a juggler, though. He's way back in the than me. But I'm uh, pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, that's enough. It's all in the 90s. Do, 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 do people still do competitions? Competitions are fun, but no. you know, I get all worked up. So I was mellowed out. I just like to tell jokes. So the, the Austin Chronicle calls you one of Mary Jane, uh, Marijuana's best one friends? One of Marijuana's best friends. Yes, I am. How do you feel about that? Uh, I accept the honor. I'm humbled. Thought me and marijuana were just kicking it. I didn't realize we were that close. But I mean, marijuana saved my life a couple times. I've saved marijuana's life. All right, we got each other's backs. Yeah. Uh, I've also gone to jail behind that motherfucker too. Yeah. But we're still friends. <laughs> we're still close. We're still friends. I work now, so that me and me don't have to go to jail. Here. Yeah, it's, and that's actually uh, uh, pretty interesting that you're here now because uh, Texas is working on a bill. To end. They just introduced one. It's a very interesting proposal too. It's like we're just going to take out. Any mention of marijuana for a while, we're going to try to regulate everything, we're just going to take it out, and you guys can do what you want. That'll create a crazy wild west out here. Yeah. Sure. You know, all the cities would have to start zoning and regulating right away. There'd be dry counties, <laughs> wet counties. Come yeah. to Waco. I'm sure Austin and San Antonio would have some nice wheat farms. Oh, what about San Marcos? Yeah. Like the whole San Antonio Austin corridor would just become rivers and weeds. Dude, I love weed, man. I don't just come out here and talk about it. I'm an activist. I go hard for weed, right? I try to change laws. I'm trying to keep people out of jail. You understand? When they tried to pass Proposition 19 two years ago, I went hard on that shit. I went door to door in my neighborhood like a weed hover's witness. <laughs> I have some good news about weed. Can I share it with you? <laughs> good morning. I'd like to talk to you about my personal relationship with marijuana. Do you have a few minutes? Have you accepted weed in your life? I have some papers. Nice. That'd be nice. Great. And swap meats. The be and dead cow parts tenderly smoked until juicy. Sounds delicious. Mm, who doesn't like to be smoked? I, I don't know. I love being smoked up. We should smoke some pot. Let's smoke some pot. Do we have more questions or are we almost done? Like, um, well, uh, how long have you been doing comedy now? Oh my god. At least a week. Yeah? Uh, it'll be 27 years. It's October. Nice. Right? So that's probably longer than everybody's been alive in this room except for me. This yeah. is the golden goat. Damn. Right? It's kind of golden. golden. It's golden. Oh, that golden goat. This is the diesel. Can you get here? Get, get close on it. I'll put the assistive light on it. Hey, you can zoom in on that. Press the right buttons. Oh. Ooh. The prepare and contrast. I think those are the two I have on me right now. I had some California marijuana, but we smoked. I mean, I think this is California too, but I had brought some Purple Haze Diesel and some uh, Blue Dream and some Chocolope. Nice. But we kind of smoked it all the first day. 
Do you have a pipe? Mm -hmm. Of course I do. Awesome. I mean, no, this is Texas. Of course I don't have a pipe. Or, well, my man's got a one here right there, which is probably pretty easier, so I don't have to get up. Mm -hmm. I got you. A little, a little untrustworthy with my pieces. Yeah, like 20 uh, So one of the other Twitter exactly. questions uh, was, was that, uh, in 27 years of doing comedy, do you still bomb? Sir. Uh, come in. Uh, I mean, there's always that chance, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I haven't had an out and out train wreck yeah. uh, in a year or two. Uh, but, you know, I don't, it's not like I go up every night and just smash it and yeah. people fall over dead or whatever. But I, I, I like to stay consistent. Consistency is big, man. A lot of times cats, you know, I don't know. That's all. Well, what's been your favorite? Why are you trying to jinx me with that shit? Huh? It was a Twitter question. That person's an asshole. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what or what? Um, what are uh, some of your favorite things about doing comedy? Jake, you that travel around and smoke weed. That's pretty dope. Okay. And what uh, what it's really sort of thing about doing comedy? Uh, I love doing comedy. Telling the jokes is the easy part. Making all the phone calls and the emails and getting all the promotion and trying to get people to your show and making a living, that's the hard part, right? Yeah. If you're not super famous already. Yeah. Which, you know, it's hard to become famous too. People work on that part too. It's part of the show business, right? Show and business are co-headliners in the deal. It's not just called show. Yeah. Uh, try to make it look like we're smoking crack. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so you're pretty, uh, you'd be pretty excited about uh, Texas legalizing? <coughs> I'm excited about <coughs> anyone legalizing, of course. They say that uh, no one should be legal everywhere. If Texas does it, then it will be. The, the rest of the states will fall in line. How do you feel about that? Well, Texas is a very big state, and Texas is a very influential state. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I definitely see it creeping west, right? And creeping down from the northeast as well. So, Oregon's legal, Washington's legal, California is expected to be the next one. Arizona has a medical marijuana ordinance. New Mexico has a really sweet medical marijuana ordinance. And that's all right next door to Texas. New Mexico's right there. Um, Colorado's not very far away anymore. You know? I don't know what's going to happen in Oklahoma and Nebraska, although Nebraska's got great dirt for weed. Those guys should be growing shit anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, because you can't get $3,000 a pound for corn. <laughs> um, but of course, if everybody grows weed, then, you know, it won't be as special, I suppose. But it will still be just as good. I think, uh, yeah, Texas, I think Texas. It's hard in Texas because you guys don't have a, an initiative uh, process, right? You gotta, it's got to go through the, your biannual convention. Yeah. It's got to go through the Congress and the Senate and the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But uh, why not? Why not? Alrighty, guy. Well, all right, Thomas. Thank you so much Stone for coming out. <laughs> and uh, it's like wiping my ass with silk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. And uh, thanks very much for coming out, man. Uh, uh, where else can uh, can we find you online anywhere? You can uh, follow me on the Twitter, okay. twitter.com uh, slash ngaio420. Okay. There's 419 other ungaios is the classic line. Um, I got a phone app coming out in a couple weeks. As soon as I get off my ass and finalize it. And uh, I'll be at the Moisture Festival in Seattle, uh, late March and early April. So oh, come on out. And I'll be at Dave's and Milton, just April 4th, for no reason. Dave's and Milton, Washington. Everybody come see me. All right, badass. Badass. Thanks, Boom, man. get it in. <laughs> it'll, it'll come back. Oh, I remember what I was talking about. I love weed. I never carry. Oh, that's what it is. OK. Weed, weed makes you forgetful, right? We talked about uh, how, how it's the dichotomy of how it helps with Alzheimer's and yet you still forget shit. Mostly I forget where I put my weed. That's really mostly what I forget. I'm not bullshitting. I found hash in my passport one time. That's never a good idea, right? Never hide the hash in your passport. That's the first place they look. Can we see your passport? No. I'll race you to the embassy. But uh, 
And I never, I never carry weed internationally, right? I carry it domestically. I don't give a shit. It's America. But internationally, no, 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 no. But there was one time. I had been in Amsterdam for seven days, and I was high. <laughs> higher than grandma's draws. You understand? Higher, higher than giraffe titties. You feel me? High, higher than a chola's eyebrows. I was high <laughs> as fuck for seven days straight, and I was going to become a smuggler. I was. I had a plan. I was just going to take a big chunk of that Nepalese temple ball Dutch hash and just stick it right in my butt because I'm old school. I'm a traditionalist in some matters. Sometimes the old ways are, in fact, the best ways. Right? You stick it in your butt and you get on the plane. The Amsterdam hamstergram. That's what I'm talking about. It's time to bring it back. Now, a friend of mine, she brought some weed back from Amsterdam. However, she did not smuggle it home in her butt. You understand? She used the marsupial method, <laughs> right? Nature's pouch. And that's how she brought it back. And of course, we smoked it, and <laughs> it was fucking delicious. Oh my God. <laughs> My, it had kind of a tang to it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> kind of like copper and seawater. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Oh, earthy. <laughs> Only time in my life I ever honky lift a joint. Now look. Uh, <laughs> right. In honor of the old masters, this is joke 65A. Joke 65A if you have the book at home. 85-year-old man is walking through the woods. He finds a frog. The frog says, if you give me a kiss, I'll turn into a 19-year-old princess. You can live in my castle. I'll take care of your every desire. So the man takes the frog and puts it in his pocket and goes walking through the woods. And after a while, the frog says, aren't you going to give me a kiss? And the man says, really, at this age, I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time. <laughs> Keep supporting live comedy.